Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu wa asyhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu usikum wa iyyaya awlan bitaqullah faqad faza almuttaqun كما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد العنز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا الله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث من حما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتق الله الذي تساءلون به وارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله wa ahsanu hadi hadu muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa syarral umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah wa kulla bid'atin dalalah wa kulla dalalatan finnar Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh All praise due to Allah the creator of all things the sender of all prophets and messengers and the revealer of all truth we thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his ni'mah his bounties that he have revealed upon us he have provided for us and we keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people who are thankful to him min ash-shakirin amin and also we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who given us the opportunity for me and my team to meet up with all the students all these beautiful people audience they are with us this afternoon for the sake of Allah because we are gathered here to try to understand the beauty of this deen al-islam and also knowing Allah Rabbul Alameen Allah is the Lord of the world not only the Lord for the Arabs or the Malay or the Pakistani but Rabbul Alameen before I proceed, I'd like to thank the organizing committee, the leaders, all those who are involved in organizing IFS uh, program. Without failing upon all the leader of these student and uh, their religious leader here, I may not remember their names, but whoever are present, and also without forgetting the recital of the prayer, even it's short, but it's important for us to remember Allah Rabbul Alameen. We started this lecture with Khutbatul Haja. Khutbatul Haja is one of the things that the Prophet always begin with by calling upon his Ummah to be thankful to Allah. Why we should be thankful to Allah? Example, we are living in Malaysia, a very peaceful country, is a ni'mah. Peace is one of the great ni'mah. We can perform our ritual without any problem. In peace, we can live in peace, eat in peace, sleep in peace. We are so peaceful until we become very passive. Too peaceful sometimes also is not healthy. And in the same time, we thank Allah because Allah reminds us about the power of being thankful to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said لَإِنْ شَقَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ أَزَابِ لَا شَدِيدَ If you are thankful to Allah's ni'mah whatever Allah have given us and if you are thankful Allah said I will increase his barakah I will increase the blessing upon what I have given you but if you are not thankful you are not yeah 
I mean you are not thankful to Allah's stigma, you take the ni'mah for granted. Then Allah said, I will take it back. Anything that I give it to you now, I have all the right to take it back. And then in the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, one he take it back, there is a sign of azab. There's a sign of azab. And then the Prophet remind his ummah. Don't forget to ask Allah for guidance. Nahmanuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfir. Ask Allah for help. And the most important help is ask Allah for guidance. And this is one of the greatest ni'mah. Every day, all the Muslims in the world never fail to ask Allah one prayer. Ehdina sirat al-mustaqim. Nothing is more important than the right path. We want to live yeah, right in this world so that we can be right in the hereafter. We want to be right from when we are young until we are old. We want to be right when we are a student until we become leaders of the community. We need to ask Allah for guidance. Guidance is very important in life. Are we not guided? Yes, we are guided, alhamdulillah. With what are we guided from? How can we say, I'm guided if you don't have something to guide you? And the thing that guides us is the Quran, Huda. When Allah says, Ihdina siratul mustaqim, O Allah, guide us to the straight path, Allah said, the Huda here is the Quran. Shahr Ramadan al-lazi unzila fihil Quran hudal linnas In the month of Ramadan that is soon to come Is the month that Allah choose to reveal all the holy books From the Torah, from Sam, Zabur, Injil and Quran The old, the new and the last testament was revealed in the month of Ramadan The blessed month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the Prophet remind us to be humble. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Because being human, whether young or old, male or female, we commit sins. Do we agree with this, brother and sister? Do we commit sin? Do we commit sins, brother? Yes. Nobody can say, no, I'm an angel here. No, we are no angel. We are no prophets. We are just human, being human. And the Prophet said, Every children of Adam, when they reach the age of maturity, they commit sins. But the best among the sinners in the sight of Allah, Allah said, are those who repent to Him. We commit sin, yes. So nobody is perfect. Don't expect perfection. This is a reminder from Allah and also to all of us. We try our level best. We try to organize the best. But whatever happened, Alhamdulillah. Be thankful. Brothers and sisters, just a short intro about Al Qadim first. Al Qadim is an organization that we established, we founded it by volunteers among the male and the female to make sure that every Muslim is ready to serve for the sake of Allah and that's why we call ourselves Al Khadim not Qadim, Qadim means old Khadim means ready to serve for the sake of Allah Alhamdulillah it started in the year 84 by volunteers 92 we registered officially until today, we have a center for the home of hope, a center to help the orphans, underprivileged, poor, and the needy. We have a tahfiz school. We organize courses locally and internationally. We organize camp, da'wah camp. We have been involved in a lot of welfare activities locally. Our neighbor country, globally, Alhamdulillah. Al-Khadim is more known 
globally than nationally because we expose ourselves more overseas than locally. But what is important today, we are going to bring you to a very important topic. This last one month, I have been traveling from China to Inder Mongolia. From there, we went to Turkey for our conference. From Turkey, we went to Macedonia. From Macedonia, we are back about a few days ago. Then we left for Philippines. And then now we are with you today. Alhamdulillah. In one month, we have been traveling at least four to five countries. Why we are traveling? Because about this topic. The global, where is the topic now? It's gone. Yeah. Islamic Renaissance. The Islamic Revival. Why there are so many invitations abroad to show us that people are waking up. The heart, the mind of the Muslim is awake now. They have been sleeping for so long. And the Prophet did give some kind of symbolic, some sign. That Islam Al-Islam belong to Allah. This religion, Islam, don't belong to you, sister, the brother, or to me. In Adina, in the law, Islam. This religion belong to Almighty Allah. And when Allah said this religion belong to Him, and He told us that this religion of Islam is for all people, not only for one particular race nation or tribes is for all mankind even the word Islam I S L A M mean I shall love all mankind that is Islam that is Islam for mankind now we are in the hall of Petronas yeah? Petronas Petro Nas means petrol for the people. Yeah. Nas means people. In Arabic, Nas means people. An Nas. Clowns will be Nas. Malikin Nas. Ilahin Nas. Of course, it's not in the ayah of Petronas, no. But you can say this petrol is for everyone. Not only for a particular group of people. Everyone have the right to Petronas. The same goes to Islam. Everyone have right to Islam. And Allah is telling us about who He is. He said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Aqul A'unz bi Rabbil Nas. Malikil Nas. Ilahil Nas. Means Allah is the sole creator. He created every single one of us. Chinese, Indian, Malay, Arab, non-Arabs. All of us are children of Adam and Eve and we are the creation of only one God, Rabbul Alamin. So if we Muslims thought that Allah is only our God, we are wrong. We are wrong to say that Allah is my God, not your God. No. When Moses was sent to Pharaoh after he ran away. No, he ran away from Pharaoh, but Allah sent him back to Pharaoh. And when he faced Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, Who sent you here? He said, Your Lord and my Lord. He never said, Only my Lord. No. He said, Your Lord and my Lord sent me to you. Now, this is the first thing that we want all the students of knowledge to understand that Allah Rabbul Alamin, number one. Number two, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent Rahmatalil Alamin. Not only for the Arabs, where the early Prophet was sent to a particular nation and tribes, except Muhammad, وسلم, he was sent Rahmatalil Nas, Rahmatalil Alamin. So it is also very wrong when the Muslims say Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is my Prophet, no, is our Prophets. Is our Prophet. It's for me, for you. You don't accept him now because you do not know who is Muhammad. So it's our duty to share 
to the people who are not yet Muslim about Islam. Even the Quran that Allah revealed, did Allah say, I revealed the Quran only for Muslim? Did Allah say that, brothers? What did Allah say about the Quran? Brothers, can you help me? What did Allah say about the Quran? Or maybe the sister can help. What did Allah say about the Quran, sister? Come on. Allahu Akbar, Barakallahu fi to the brother. Allah said, Shah Ramadan al-lazi unzila fihi al-Quran hudal linnas. In the month of Ramadan, we reveal the Holy Quran as a guidance for mankind. So every one of us have the right to the Quran. The Chinese have right to the Quran. The Indian have right to the Quran. The Malay, the Arabs, the non-Arab. Before Islam, the Arab is known as pagans, mushrikeen. Then Allah sent a prophet among them. But not for them only, just among them, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to bring the message of peace, Islam, to all of them, to make everyone become brothers and sisters. That is what Islam is. Global, yes. Universal, yes. Not local. But the Malay can. Enter Islam. That is correct. The Chinese enter Islam. That is correct. The Indian enter Islam. That is correct. The Arab entering Islam. Is that correct or wrong? We have some Arab brothers here. Yes, good. Arab entering Islam. Is that correct? Yes, you must say yes. Because once upon a time the Arab was not Muslim, then Islam came to the Holy Land. We know Mecca is covered with 360 idols, and every idol represents one tribe. And with Islam, everything is clean in 23 years. 23 years, the revival of Islam changed the whole image of the Arabs. From a nation that worship idols to the nation who free themselves from worshiping other than Allah. And that is the beginning of the Renaissance of Islam. Changing the whole yeah, lifestyle of the pagans. And Islam keep on moving. In the time of the Ottoman Empire, it spread further and further into Europe. At that point of time, Europe is known as the Dark Ages, uncivilized country. Alhamdulillah, because of Islam, opened the eye of all the not yet Muslim, and they start to learn from Muslim scholars. But after some time, the Muslim become very passive. The Muslim become very comfortable they forgot to strive harder and harder and other nation took over but at the end of the day Allah said this is my religion I will protect it and it's happening now when we're traveling to the globe last few days when I was in Manila we are talking to the group of the Filipinos Alhamdulillah, each time when we have some discussion about Islam and the power of loving Allah, we have eight, eight people just come to the stage that we want to be a Muslim. When we went to Norway, we talked about Islam. To the Norwegian, after a Q&A session, you have four to six people come up and say, we want to be a Muslim. We're in Belgium and Netherlands. We talk to the not yet Muslim about what is Islam because phobia, Islamic phobia is very strong. The more people fear Islam, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the heart of the people. They want to know more. What is this religion? 
the more people create fitna toward Islam by saying Islam is terrorist, it opened the eye of the good people want to know what is this religion that teach people to terrorize people. Then they found out the truth. Islam is not a religion of terrorists. Islam is a religion of love, forgiving, mercy, peace. Nothing to do with terrorism. Who terrorizes who? Is the people who are not happy with the peace that Islam can provide to the world. The only solution. If the world is looking for peace, there's no other way out than to come back to Allah Almighty who promised us peace. Because peace belongs to Allah. Allah said Allah. We also say to Allah, Allahumma anta salab. Oh Allah, peace is yours, belong to you. Wa minka salam. And from you come all the peace. Have we been reciting this dua, sisters? Allahumma anta salam. Wa minka salam. Have you recited this before? Yes. But do you understand this recitation? You may understand, but you don't know how to apply it. Allah and the Prophet is reminding us, peace belongs to Allah. Whoever really look for peace, don't look to the west or the east, north or south. Just look into Islam. Islam promised us peace. Not only peace for yourself, but also peace with the environment. Today, the environment is not having a lot of peace. We experience haze after haze. It's not peace. Because of what? Because people forget about Islam. Now, I like to share with the sister and the brother. Let us recite one saying of our Prophet. Memorize one saying today. Or I just want to ask something. Have, do we love Allah, sister? I want to hear your word. Do we love Allah? Yes. Good. Do we love Allah, brothers? Yes. Good. Alhamdulillah. The expression is very good. You must express yourself. Allah wants you to express yourself. Because we love Allah. Have we memorized the Quran, sisters? No sound? Have you memorized Quran, sisters? Have you memorized Quran, brother? Alhamdulillah. Have you memorized Fatiha? Have you memorized Kulhu Allah, brother? Alhamdulillah. That's what I say. I didn't say memorize the whole Quran. But you're afraid to answer me. You say, oh, because I don't memorize the whole Quran. Have you memorized? The Quran, yes, I memorize Fatiha, I memorize Inna Aqtayna, I memorize Kul Humba, I memorize Kul Ya Yuhal Kafir, just the name all the short short words I memorize. Yeah, because we are in the IT world now, so everything very short and yeah, simple. Yeah. So all the simple, simple surah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, at least you memorize some verses of the Quran because you love Allah. Do we love our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sisters? Brothers? Yes, Alhamdulillah, you have to say yes because the Prophet promised us whoever loves the Prophet, he or she will be with the Prophets. Whoever loves the righteous people, he or she will be with the righteous people. Ibn Abbas did ask the Prophet, can we be among the righteous people with the Prophet when we are nobody? We are just normal people. We don't have the money to contribute for the sake of Allah, we do not pray like how other early nations prayed. They pray the far, they pray the sunnah. Their iman is so strong, our iman is weak. But can we be with them? Can we be with the Prophet in Jannatul Tardos Al A'la? You know what the Prophet said to us? He said, Yes, you will be with those whom you love. Allahu Akbar. You will be with whom you love. This is the power of love. If you love Allah, you do what Allah wants you to do. You love the Prophet, you do what the Prophet wants you to do. Okay. Have you memorized one hadith of the Prophet? 
sister, just raise up your hand. How many of you have memorized one saying of Prophet Muhammad? So raise up your hand. Just one. One saying. Alhamdulillah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. More hand. Good. There are some hidden hand here and there. Alhamdulillah. Have you memorized one saying of Prophet Muhammad, brothers? Come on, come on. Yeah. Your hand will be a witness, you know. Your hand will be a witness. Alhamdulillah. Now today I want to share with you another saying. At least, when we depart, we cannot say, I learned nothing. But I remember something. Now I'm going to guide you. I recite, listen carefully. I recite the first time. The second, everybody follow me. The third time, everyone follow me too. The fourth time, only sister recite. The fifth time, only brothers recite. But one thing I want to guarantee you as student of knowledge, because we are all are still young, energetic, I think we are able to memorize this hadith. Inshallah by following me because I'm going to give you a very special hadith that you can memorize today do you love this hadith sisters? do you love to memorize this hadith? yeah how about you brothers? good alhamdulillah but hadith is not very cheap sometimes in the time the prophet companion travel 100 kilometers to seek one hadith just one hadith they value the saying of Prophet Muhammad but I have two things that I'd like to remind number one we did also brought some beautiful cut Ramadan and Idul Fitri two in one it's a very unique cut you don't wish people eat Mubarak when they don't fast. Call them to fast first. Yeah. And this is for our activities back home. You can purchase through our brothers who are team who come with me. Just three ringgit one. This is how cheap it is. Secondly, before I share with you this beautiful hadith, and I come back to the title of today's topic, I have started this lecture with the greeting of peace but I don't receive the greeting of peace from all of you in the manner that Allah and the Prophet want us to respond in the Quran Surah An-Nisa Allah remind us وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحْيِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَرُدُّهَا إِلَىٰ آخِرَ آيَةٍ when anybody offer the Islamic greeting of peace, salam, respond to the greeting with a better one, or at least the same. So the Prophet said to his ummah, Khairu ummah, the best nation, if a person come to you and offer you the greeting of peace, assalamu alaikum, you should respond, Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah. Better than the one who offer you. If the second person come and give you the salam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, your response should be wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. If the third person offer you the same salam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, that means the longest salam. So how should you respond? Irfa sautakum. You should respond with your voice louder than the one who offer you the greeting. Example, if I'm going to offer you the second round of salam, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, the response should be wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's how you should respond. But the first salam was not respond properly. So I'm going to give you the second salam. We hope that we are here not just to listen to knowledge, but to act upon the knowledge. We want to be a practicing Muslim. We do not want to be a sleeping Muslim, talking Muslim, but we want to be a practicing Muslim. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah brothers sisters you are still very negative the prophet never said that when salam offer to the male and the female only male have to respond and the female don't have to respond the salam is the right of the male and the female the prophet never forbid a man offering salam to the sister or the sister offering salam to the brother you can because the prophet said Hakul Muslim ala Muslim situn. The right of Muslim to animal is six. One of it is is a laqid who fa salim alay. When you meet, you give salam, mean peace be upon you. Not to play around, no. You wish peace for the sister, the sister wish peace for the brother. Everything is for the sake of Allah. So next time, if anybody offer you salam, sister, don't be shy to to respond. I have a lot of students from overseas. They say, I don't know what happened to the sister in this country. When I offer them salam, they look at me. They got stung, they don't say anything. <laughs> Why? Because you look like a, a stranger to them. I think because you look mat saleh, that's why they cannot respond to you. But if you look like a Ramli, and you look like uh, a Malay, then they respond. As do as Islam belong to the Malays. Now, now I'm bringing you back to this hadith. Listen first. Second time you follow, both follow. Third you follow. The fourth sisters only. The fifth brother. Inshallah. We make it easy for you. I'm making to ask, but I'm making it easy for all of you to memorize. And this hadith, the Prophet said. La darara wa la dirar. That's all. That's how simple is it. Now you follow me for two times. La darara wa la dirar. La darara wa la dirar. So you have memorized it. See how fast you memory the hadith? Yeah, I love to go for all these short, short hadith. You know the beautiful of this hadith, the Prophet is telling his ummah. His ummah is an ummah who will not do anything or say anything that cause harm to themselves. La darara. And they will never do anything or say anything that cause harm to other people. The Muslim always bring benefit to everybody. What are they Anything you want to do, you ask yourself. If I do this, is this good for me or not? Not, I stay away. If you want to eat this food, this food is good for me or not? If you want to drink this drink, is this drink? It's beneficial for me or not. If not, stay away. If you don't like something that is bad for you, the same go to others. You don't like anything bad for other people. So we are all good people. Is smoking good for you, brothers? Alhamdulillah. Is smoking good for you, sister? Do you like a husband who smoke? Alhamdulillah. You must say it loud and clear next time. Any guy come to you, look at his character. If you start to smoke, just cancel all the appointment with him. And now, look at smoking guy, call us. Because one, he don't love himself, he will not love you. And he'll blow all the smoke in front of you, they don't care how you feel. Even you cough in front of you, he has no feeling. You know, smoking is very bad. And now you see they are smoking the whole country now. This is worse. <laughs> yeah. If you say smoking is good, you say smoking is okay. Who said that? Who said that smoking is okay? Anything good, you will never do it in the toilet. 
anything good, you don't eat biscuit in the toilet, you don't take snack in the toilet, you don't drink tetari in the toilet, but you can bring cigarette to the toilet. Because cigarettes smell like shit. So it fit, it really fit the toilet. Islam is beautiful. Now let us come back to the topic about Islam, the renaissance of Islam that is happening in the West. Now it is confirmed that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. In China, in the Ming Dynasty, you have 120 million of Muslims in China. 120 million, four times the population of the whole Malaysia. But most Islam is still very strong in China, even after the communist regime. In the West, there are a lot of people, the white Americans plus the black Americans, they always say, Thank you to Mr. Bush because of his campaign on terrorists, you know, war against terrorists, opened the eye of a lot of white men and also the black men in America. What is this religion? Committing suicide, suicide bomb, and they start to read the Quran to the extent that there is no more Quran in the shop. Everybody wants to know what is in this book that makes these people so terrible and they found out the truth of Islam and they come to Islam not one, two, by hundreds of Allahu Akbar. Each time when we have a peace conference before in India, Allahu Akbar, you can see people just coming in. People just make shahada, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Country where the Muslim leader have been sleeping for too long, you can see the revival. Renaissance is coming back. Once upon a time, the door of Europe was open to all the Muslim refugees. Afghanis in Australia, Somali in Norway, the Turks in Germany and all other European countries, they open their door, welcome, welcome. And they also have their own agenda to change the mindset of the Muslim so that they will leave Islam. When they come to us, we we'll give them everything they need in this world and we are going to change them to be like one of us. But Allah has his own plan. Since 20 years ago, I was very active in doing a lot of this da'wah. Because I involved in da'wah since the 70s until today. But 20 years ago, you can see the renaissance coming up very, very strong. People just want to hear the word of Allah. People just want to know about what Allah said in the Quran. People are looking for Islam to overcome their problem. And when we travel to this country, mashallah, Allah opened the heart. Not all people. One of the greatest signs when Islam is going to come back, Allah opened the heart of the younger generation. All majority are younger in the in mosque in 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 Skopje. Macedonia. I just came back about a week ago. Allahu Akbar. Zoho time, three quarter full. Zoho time, not week and weekdays. Three quarter, the mosque was full with young people. People are coming back. People know the importance of coming back to Islam, coming back to Allah because they always find peace and they 
can see that Islam provide a solution for the problem. This is happening now. They have planned to change our mindset. But after some time, they have invested billions of dollars to change the mindset of the Muslim. They succeed for one era, but the time come, Allah wake up the heart of the Muslim, Allah open their mind, these young people coming back. You know how they look today? They dress better than all our dressing here. They are no more with dressing or they do still have jinn with them, but Islamic jeans. You know Islamic jeans? You have jinn Islam and jinn cafe. <laughs> I don't know you know that or not. Maybe you know that. Even they wear jeans, brothers and sisters. Allow me to show you something. It's just like the dress that I'm dressing now. No. All the young people are dressing and all their jeans is above their ankle. Why they dress like that, sisters? Because the Prophet command them to do so. They are following the Prophets. They are not shy. How do people look at them? They are not shy. They don't care what people want to say about them. As long as they please Allah, as long as they follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Their fathers was all clean shaped. The son, MashaAllah, all beard. Allahu Akbar. Why do the younger generation in the West are keeping beard today? Allah, Allah. Sisters before have wearing all the half naked dress. Because the West portrayed this is how you can be famous. To be famous, you must dress sexy, you must open here, open there, open everywhere. But the sister today, Allah Akbar, people who just make shahada, they say it's time to change. Today they make shahada, tomorrow they change. Allah Akbar. Not only born Muslim is changing, reverts, reverts. Today she was undressed, tomorrow she covered herself properly. They say, I have been pleasing people all the way. Now it's time for me to please Lord of the universe, Allah. You see the spirit, you see the love they had for Islam. Who changed them? And now the West is having this problem. They don't know what to handle. There's nothing to control. It belongs to Allah. You cannot control the heart of the people. Allah is the one who controls the heart of the people. When the time comes, it's going to come. And it's coming and it's growing every single day. That is the renaissance of Islam. It's growing everywhere. But maybe majority of the students here are not exposed. Because media is not controlled by us. It's controlled by the other group of people. We never treat a not yet Muslim as our enemy. We don't treat them as enemy. We treat everybody like family. But they treat us like enemy. Look at Malaysia. Just example, the beautiful part of Malaysia. Anybody can come and visit Malaysia. Alhamdulillah. And we welcome them. Because we don't feel threatened. We are good people. So we always have good feeling towards other people. Where the West sometimes is very sad. They treat us like we are their enemy. When you carry a Muslim name, huh? when you have the Abu Abu, oh. name become an issue for them. And they will check you like you are a criminal. We, our country, Alhamdulillah, the immigration will never check, treat you like an animal or a criminal or an enemy. Welcome. Welcome. Alhamdulillah. Why they have the fear? Why they have this fear? When I look at it, they don't fear Osama bin Laden. No. Do you think they fear Osama bin Laden? No. 
It's a man, just one guy. Do you think they fear Iraq? Saddam Hussein? No. If they want to destroy this man, they can easily send all their agents. But they don't want to do that. Until they have no choice, we don't know what is the drama behind it. Only Allah knows. But what really happened? They fear the truth of Islam. The renaissance of Islam is coming. Whether they like it or not, it is coming because it's Allah's religion and Allah promised us that it will revive again. And it's happening. Inshallah to all the sisters, if you go to any part of the country in the world today, even in Russia now, mashallah, you'll be surprised to see the spirit of the people is stronger than all of us here. They can pray anywhere. We are shy to pray in an in a open area, but not in the West. They can pray Jumat in the in the R and R area. They they can give lecture everywhere. They have more freedom to express themselves today. And they can talk to anybody about Islam in a railway station, in any area in the park. You don't have this kind of activities here yet. They are more yeah, spiritual than all of us. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us Islam. But we need to have the spirit back. We have a lot of not yet Muslim in our country. I just want to ask a sister, do you have people who are not yet Muslim as your friend, sister? You have good. Have you shared with them about Islam? Have you talked to them about Islam? Any one of them show interest? What do you do after them? Now if they say to you, I love you sister, I want to marry you, what do you say to him? What do you say to him? Cannot lah. Yeah, you are not like me. You want to be a racist? MashaAllah, if you can cause a person to come to Islam, you know what is the reward from Allah? The Prophet said, فَوَاللَّهُ لِأَنْ يَحْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاهِدًا قَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ مِنْ حُمْرِ نِعَمْ قَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ دُنْيَا مَا فِيهَا In other saying, if with the will of Allah, and the Prophet swear the name of, if because of you, a person become Muslim, you will be blessed by Allah. You get huge reward from Allah. There's nothing wrong. All the brother, do you have not yet Muslim friend? Yes. Have you talked to them about Islam? You talk to them about politics? Yes. You talk to them about football? Yes. You talk to them about fruits? Yes. About food? Everything you talk to them. But did you talk to them about Islam? You have to ask yourself. If you don't share Islam with them, if you die, brothers, you are the cause yeah, of stopping Islam spreading. You are the person who have betrayed the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Because the Prophet said, Convey a message from me, even one single ayah that you have learned. You must convey. And even Allah said, Every nikmah that Allah has given you, the truth of Islam, you must share with other people. We are not here to judge anybody, brothers and sisters. We are not here to say, you go to hell. Ini what? With the, the northern side. Eh? They say, ini kapiak. Kapiak masuk neraka. That's a word they used to use. I used to hear this, you know. We are just like you. Another race. But if we are eating all the wrong thing, it's not because we choose to eat. Because we were brought up with the environment. And the Prophet ﷺ have said, Kullu maulid yulad ala fitra. Every child is born clean, pure Muslims. Every child. Whether he's a Malay child, Chinese, Indian, Bengali child, all are Muslim. Fitra. Fa'abawahu yuhawidanihi. This is what the Prophet said. What happened is, it is at home, it is their parent. The upbringing of the parent who make them a Jew, a Nasara, a Majus. 
or a disbeliever. Yet at home, because our parents, they are not yet Muslim, so we were brought up like a not yet Muslim. It's not our mistake. But if you know that we are wrong, you should approach us, tell us about Islam. Invite us to Islam. Like how the West is doing now. Most of the Muslim, the revert in the West are not people like you, like all of you. They are professional people, priests, preacher, educator, yeah, academician, all are high ranking people. And not only they come to Islam, the minute they enter Islam, they learn Arabic. Allahu Akbar. They learn the language of the Quran. And after that, they are calling their friend, their neighbor, their family. MashaAllah. You have like Yusuf Estes. This is all our colleague in our peace TV team. Thousands of people enter Islam to his hand. Not only they become Muslim, they are calling their people back to Islam. We have been calling people to Islam since the 70s until today, Alhamdulillah. If you ask me, how many people have entered Islam through my little effort? I say minimum 5,000. That is what I can remember. What I can remember, Allah knows best. Now imagine, brother and sister, if each of you call one friend entering Islam. How many of us are here today? You have maybe 200 example or 300. A 300 student here, they leave this hall, they have a mission to bring Islam back. In the next year, you have 600. I show you one simple example. Mecca is known as a country of the pagans full of shirk in 23 years it changed Medina you have a lot of the mushrikeen and the people of the book the Yahud and Nasara 23 years the whole landscape of Makkah Medina changed Makkah now is known Makkah al muqarramah Medina Yatrib is known as Medina Al Munawwara. Just 23 years. Every single day the Prophet would go out and call people to Islam. At night he make dua, Oh Allah, give them hidayah. Oh Allah, I have convey your message. You are the one who give hidayah. That's what Allah said. Our duty is to convey hidayah belong to Allah. And because the new convert in the West is active in calling their people back to Islam, you can see the Islamic Renaissance is coming up very, very fast and make the people, the politicians, very unrest. At, at first they were so rest, they are unrest now. But there's no threat. We are calling people to become good. We are calling people back to God, the true God, not the false God. We are calling people back to their fitrah. That is Islam. And make them brothers and sisters like a family that we don't live like a stranger. But in a way, in certain part of Europe, they have accepted a lot of Islamic values that was taught by Prophet Muhammad without telling us that that is from Islam. Do you know which one? Sister, if I ask you or the brother, do you know which part of the West that people are accepting all the Islamic values? One of the policy that happened in EU. EU is establishing a Khilafah system. People is asking me then how are we going to handle this kind of people today? If any country of the EU been attacked by anybody, the whole EU will have to respond. 
is all in one and one for all. This is this Khalifa system. We do not want to follow and they are following. You remember the hadith that the Prophet said that one of the signs of the doom day, the sun will rise from the west. Now the sun rise from where, sisters? Where do the sun rise? From the east. The time will come, the sun will rise from the west. What is the meaning of the sun rise from the west? One of the meaning. The Islamic Renaissance is coming up from the west. And it's happening. Nobody can control that. Yeah, the Muslim is growing very fast. Why? Because Muslim love to have big family. Muslim love to have big family. They love family. They love children. One family, three children, minimum five. So have ten children sometimes, alhamdulillah. Where the people who don't believe in Allah, they micro family. You know, very micro family. They want to have one daughter or one daughter and one son, three dogs. Yeah. They can keep three dogs with them. But when children got one or two and now dog three, yeah, maybe cat ten, no problem. But we love human more than things. And now the population of the Muslim in 20 years to come, it will multiply. And this is how the Islamic Renaissance is going to come out. And the one that is happening in the West, brother and sister, please, don't underestimate the people in the West. I have been traveling to the West having conferences, dialogues. I've been entering home of correction, they call prisons. But alhamdulillah, I'm not stay, I don't stay there. I just enter there, giving my khutbah, talking to the inmates, alhamdulillah. You cannot imagine that the Muslim I shared with two stories. When I was giving khutbah in one of the prisons in Newark, USA. The inmates who all became Muslims, mashallah. When I want to give a khutbah, when the khutbah start, you can see four, at least four brothers will stand each corner and look at everybody. Left, right, left, right. Nobody talked. They monitor the discipline of Jumaat. They don't allow anybody to play around, to talk, because it is forbidden to do anything when the Imam is giving khutbah. You must pay attention to the khutbah. And when the time of prayer starts, they say to me, Sheikh, give us a few seconds. I say, Fadda. Two guys, one right, one left, will walk. Saf to saf, row to row to check that the south is straight and the gap is closed shoulder to shoulder, fit to fit leave no gaps among yourself <coughs> it's like we are living in the time of the prophet to strengthen the unity of the ummah to strengthen the heart to make them become close and strong this is what the Prophet said, when you want to pray Jama'ah, make sure the south is straight and you stand close to each other, shoulder to shoulder, feet to feet, leave no gaps. MashaAllah, you can experience that spirit in the West, not here. Here if you pray, you want to get close, the people run away from you. And that's why I have my student who came here, they said, Sheikh Hussein, how wide can I open my leg? I want to stand close to them because the Prophet command. Suddenly, he moved away. So I got to open my leg more. He moved again. I got to open again. I, an American is not small size. But he said, can I open like that? I said, no, no. Don't do that. Ugly, you know. 
he look ugly, not look like. I said, if he don't he run away from what can you do? If you can pull him, you pull him. You can't pull him. After the prayer, you remind him. Nasiha. They got very upset. What is happening to the Muslim? They said, don't they know the simple adab? Don't they know this is what the Prophet commanded them to do? These are rewards talking to us. They practice the deen, we don't practice the deen. They have the iman, we have, or they have Islam, we have iman. Physically, they are very strong because whatever they learn, they will practice. And do you know what is happening to the West today? Muslim traveling with Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. Learning the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. We until today don't even open Sahih Bukhari. Am I correct sister? Did you read the book of Sahih Bukhari sister? Alhamdulillah. They are very truthful. Alhamdulillah. Do you read the Sahih Bukhari with you brother? Some of you maybe inshallah. We are alien to the sunnah of the Prophet. One day when I was talking to the group of people, I said, we should look into Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. After that, a group of elderly person came to me, Imam, okay, you just said yourself in your speech, Bukhari Muslim. Who are this Imam? We only know Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali. And you talk Bukhari Muslim. I said, do you remember Nasib Bukhari? Oh, Nasib Bukhari, yes. You know the rice Bukhara, Bukhari rice. But you don't know what is Sahih Bukhari. It caught me by surprise that elderly people are alien to Imam Bukhari. You go to the West, they are open, holding Bukhari. You want to say anything about Islam? They ask you, you have reference? Do you have reference? Or your opinion? Your opinion we don't want. We want the true Islam. We want the Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet because Allah commands us to follow Prophet Muhammad Allahu Akbar That's why I'm saying the Renaissance of Islam is great, is true, is coming. You will only hope that we are not left behind. Yeah, it's growing very, very forceful in the West. Yeah, but to all the students of knowledge, in case you are traveling soon to any part of the West country, any country, you have no contact, please contact us. We'll give you all the good people because you need to be with the good people. And Allah said, Wa ma Be among the Siddiqeen. The Siddiqeen are the group of Muslims who please Allah and the Prophet. What Allah said, they will submit nawa ta'na. What the Prophet said, they will respond submit nawa ta'na. These are righteous people. When they talk about Islam, they don't put their opinion ahead. They will say, Allah said so, this is the worst. Of. The Prophet said so. Call Allah wa call Rasulullah. And this is called pure knowledge. A believer, Allah said, لا تقدموا بين يديه الله ورسول واتق الله إن الله سميع عليم. A believer will never put the saying, the opinion of anybody ahead of Allah's word and the saying of Prophet Muhammad This is a true believer. When they say anything, Allah said, reference. The Prophet said, reference. Not what I say now. May Allah subhanahu give us good understanding, the right spirit to understand the beauty of Islam. And if we are not part of the renovation of Islam in the West, at least we do something to ourselves because Allah said Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. save your soul first and the soul of your family the one that is close to you from the hellfire and this is a few words that I like to say to all the brothers and sisters and don't forget the hadith that we have recited early we do it again then I will open for Q&A before we and I like I like to have a lot of Q&A inshallah la darara Wala dirar, la darara, wala dirar, la darara, wala dirar. Again, brothers, alhamdulillah. So, if anybody who is a smoker, you have to stop smoking because you are not supposed to cause harm to yourself and waste money, burning ringgit and ringgit for nothing. Yeah. For the sake of Allah, you can do. I'm a smoker before. 
I dare to challenge you because I was a smoker before I became Muslim. Don't say Sheikh Hussein know nothing about smoking. Smoking the sumbur in Seprasi. Nauzubillah. You know, smoke everything is not good. You know, yeah, you want good environment, healthy environment. We do not want to pollute the air. Yeah, inshallah. If there's any question now, we open for Q and A, brothers and sisters. According to my watch now, my watch. I don't know the time here. Yeah? What is the time with you now? 4.30? 4.20 plus. Okay, my 4.15. I give you some time if there's any question. The floor is open for the audience now. Brothers and sisters, we always, when Q&A, we offer ladies first. If there's a question, you can come down. Yeah, the mic is ready for you. Fata Fata. From BIS, May 12. Um, question. The simple question. How is the best way and the simplest way for us uh, Muslim to get closer with Islam Muslim? I mean, like um, to to show them that it's not just the best. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Very beautiful question from the sister. What is the best way to approach? Now, the first thing I want to share with all of you, don't use this term, non-Muslim. Don't ever use the term kafir. The better term for you to use is not yet Muslim. Because when you say non-Muslim, you are judging them. Who are we to judge them? They can be a Muslim anytime. I call them brothers and sisters. I address all the people who I know, Muslim or not yet Muslim, I say, you are my brother, you are my sister. Hi brother, how are you today? No, you must have a good PR. Feel for them, care for them. Have a good PR. Make friends with them first. If they are not your friend, they will not want to listen to you. The best approach is through our example. Da'wah bil hal, afdal min da'wah bil lisan. Show them good example that we are good people, we are amana, we don't use bad words when we talk to people, we talk only things that benefit us, we don't gossip about people, we don't bad buy about anybody, we are just talking about how to get closer to God, how to become a better person. By doing that, inshallah, you show them the beauty of Islam. When they look at our character and they are attracted to our character, then inshallah, it's easy for you to bring them closer to Islam. And you show that they have interest, they may want to know a lot about Islam. One simple thing I'd like to share with you, give you two tips. How to start the communication with them about religion. If he or she, when I talk about the sister, so sister and sister, she and she. Yeah? When I talk to the brother, he and he. Yeah? He, she, she, he is not so healthy. You know? We have Zakar and Unsa, we don't have she, she and she, she. Yeah? We are he, he and she, she. When you meet any of your friends, if they are close to you, you can just ask her if she is a religious person, whether she is a Buddhist, whether she is a Hinduism, who follows Hindu teaching, or she is a Christian, you ask her, sister, what do you think about the Muslim? We just want to know how they think. But it's easy when you are close to them, you are friends with them, then how, what do you think about the Muslim? Or you can, what do you think about Islam? Now when you ask her, don't stop her from expressing herself. Because you are close to her, she may want to share a lot of things with you. Let her release herself. Let her express herself. You don't have to answer, don't have to answer them. Just listen. Try to note down all the important points. If you have the answer, you have to explain to them. If no, don't say anything. Silent is wisdom sometimes. Just collect all the negative points that they talk about this religion. 
then you refer to somebody who had the answer and share the answer with her. If not, you can bring, oh, I think I will bring you to see somebody. I think you can get a better explanation from that person. That would be the best. We are worried that you give them the wrong answer. If she is not yet a believer, that means she's a free thinker. Neither she's a Christian or Buddhist, she has no religion. Then she is halfway to Islam. Do you know that? Do you know that people who say, I don't believe in any God, they are halfway to Islam? Because when you want to believe in Islam, what must you say? Shahada. Shahada means what? You bear witness there's no other God except Allah. They have bear witness there's no other God. That's why they call themselves free thinker. I don't believe in any God. No God. La ilah is with them already. Now they have to just come from illallah. I used to say to them, you don't believe? Oh, you are 50% with me now. Hey, what do you mean 50%? Yeah, because I also have the same talk with you. La ilah, la ilah means there's no God. No God. But I have Allah at the end. You don't have him yet. I will share with you who is Allah. You ask them first. Ask them, if you are a believer, don't talk about whether they believe in God or not. Ask them about it. But if you're a disbeliever, you say to him, the one who don't believe in God, what do you think about people who believe in God? You remember this point? For those who have religion, what do you think about Islam? For those who have no religion, what do you think about people who believe in God? Because he don't believe in God. We want to know what he think. Why? Because the Prophet said, nas ala qadri ukulihim. When you want to talk to a person, you must know what he think. His level is very important. You got that message, sister? We do organize this kind of course on and on. If you're in Colombo, contact us. Come to our center. We do have a lot of this kind of discussion going on. Yeah. Now, brother, next. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmed Sunni. I'm doing uh, petroleum engineering. MashaAllah, brothers. Uh, I know a Chinese river. Uh, he's still young. And uh, his family is threatening him that they will cut him out of the family. Mm -hmm. Still depending on the family. No. So he's afraid to uh, to tell his family that he converted. Mm -hmm. At the same time, because of that, he's keeping that secret. Uh, he doesn't uh, practice all this time. Yeah. So how can I pass? Alhamdulillah. May Allah strengthen his iman. We have this issue in our country, only in our country. You don't have the problem in any other country because they honor the freedom of a person. They can choose. But this country, they are phobia too. Because the tradition is very strong among the Asian, include Malaysian, include the Chinese. The family is sometimes because they don't understand what is Islam and that's why they get very upset, they get very angry. If any of the children become a Muslim, they may force them to leave or they will cut the relation with them. I had that experience before. I had that fear before. But Alhamdulillah, because I got good people to support me, to guide me, I have to be strong and go back to see my family and tell them once for all. The fear is only once. As a father, but you must show changes in you. You fear doing the wrong thing. You are not fear to do something right. So you must change your character, the way you talk to your parents. That's what I've done to myself. I changed my character, my own conduct have changed. Last time, if they shout, I shout back. Now they can shout, I don't shout back anymore. I show respect to my mother. My sibling, my grandma, my father passed away when I was very young. I worried that my brother would beat me up. But later on, they didn't know the truth. 
You say, as long as you know what is good for you, carry on. We must prove to them that we are still the children. We are not supposed to run away from them. Some people got the wrong idea. Why you become Muslim? You cut your relationship with your not yet Muslim family. No. There's their father, there's their mother, they can stay there. But if he still has this problem, it's not new. It's something that's happening in this country. We hope, inshallah, the good people who is close to his family can help him. If you know somebody, some Muslim family, close to his family, so he can ask some help if they can. If not, then they got to go back in the time of Islam. In the beginning of Islam, people do it secretly. So if that's the only thing they can do now, we just have to help them in any way we can. And if they still have a lot of problem, you can call them to contact us. We will try to understand their problem. We do that sometimes. If they want us to talk to their parents, we will talk to their parents. And sometimes the parents will come, before they start to talk, they shout at us. We have, we will listen. When they cool down, then we talk to them. And we have tea with them, and Alhamdulillah, no problem after that. You know, sometimes when they understand, they won't have problem. Because the fear is there. Because in our country, anyone want to be a Muslim, they thought, the Chinese people thought, now you become a Malay. There is an issue. I know because when I became Muslim, my mother said, I lost one son. My son is no more Chinese. He became a Malay. I said, Mommy, I am still your son. I am a Chinese. I will die as a Chinese. But a Muslim. Said, no, 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 no. Malay, you Malay now. I said, no, I am a Chinese. I don't blame my mom because she did not know. But I went to the village, the Muslim village, Kampong. So some elderly men came to know that I'm a Muslim, they asked me, Did I masuk Melayu? <laughs> now, confirm what my mother said. They asked me when I become a Malay. I got a shock. Don't you know that I'm not a Malay? You know, my name is Yi. Malay don't have Yi with him. But later on, I proved to my mother that what she feels is wrong. I'm still son. I always see them. I care for them before she passed away. I make her make shahada. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> and then my father passed away in Ipo, <coughs> staying with my sister. Alhamdulillah. So I would say to be brave, brother, if they still have problem, try to contact us. We'll try to understand his issue and we'll try to guide him, inshallah. <coughs> Next, brother. Assalamualaikum. <coughs> Salam uh, my name is Muhammad Zubaka. I'm doing ICT. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, okay. Indeed is uh, my question that okay, indeed is Islam is for all mankind, mm -hmm. and we know that uh, there is no uh, certain specification for you to become a Muslim. But how does Islam and we Muslim react when uh, when our not yet Muslim brothers and sisters okay. use the term in the Quran, use the verses from the Quran, use the term salam and give salam for us and they mention Allah. So how does Islam, Islam reflect to all these issues? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Islamically, there's no easy. Islamically, there's no easy. Even the, the, the wording of salam, when Allah revealed the ayah, wa is the bi tahiyatin fahayu bi ahsana minha arduha, then the Prophet said, "Man sallama alayka min khalqillah fardud alay wa in kana yahudiyan or nasraniyan or manjusiyan." Whoever offer you a Islamic greeting, salam, respond to his salam. Even the greeter is a Yahud or Nasara or a not yet believer. No issue, but. We cannot offer them because the adab is they can offer because offering is just an, a voluntary thing but responding is compulsory. So we cannot force on them because they are not yet Muslim. <laughs> but they can use. There's no problem if they want to say inshallah, mashallah, no issue at all. But lately there's an issue because we do not know why it became an issue. And we do not want them to misuse the word of Allah too. To say that Jesus is Allah cannot. 
You cannot say Jesus is Allah. Because Allah said, Qul huwa Allahu ad, Allah is one. Lam yalik wa lam yudah. He is not a son to anybody, neither his father. That. So if anybody believe that Jesus is a son of Mary, and they want to use Allah as Allah by himself, no problem. Even shaitan use the word Allah. Even shaitan recite ayatul kursi. Yeah, but in this country, because of some other issues, that's why we make ruling that we do not want people who are not yet Muslim to misuse the Islamic terms. But in other country, no issue. That's what I can say to you. There's nothing wrong Islamic. As long as the people who use this term don't have the bad intention because we do not want one day people open a, 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 a pub and he put the name Allah. It's not good. If you allow them to use the name Allah, they make a shoes and they put Allah. Then you create a lot of unrest to other people. So we don't make use of their religious name. They should not make use of our religious name for the sake of harmony and peace among ourselves. But nobody can stop them from using these terms. You go to Middle East, MashaAllah, InshaAllah, no problem. You understand that, brother Inshallah. Next, please. How long do we have still? We are now it's 4:30 now. My watch. Maybe we have 10 more minutes. Fadas, brothers. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmad and I'm in Kaliji Kabilir. I'm doing the Okay. Uh, my question is kind of it's related to the first question as how we want to approach the the not yet Muslim. Not yet Muslim. Okay. Now my question is how we approach the Muslims uh, themselves as you know as now they we are tends to mold by the culture as now. We, Muslim now they are not followed by the Sunnah. They are tends to do something that not the Sunnah. And when people do some Sunnah, like you said, uh, when you're serving a, a beer and when you closing the gap. Now, can you give some tips or how we can approach them nicely as sometimes we can tend to agree with them? No, no. Thank you to the brother. We are facing a lot of issues within ourselves because uh, among the Ummah, they are confused. When people want to call them to follow the Sunnah, they thought it's something strange, something new. So what is the best way? It's Tarbiyah, brother. You take time. You have to have educational courses, classes, ongoing classes to explain to them. It's not easy to change the mindset of a person sometimes, but we try our best. In doing da'wah or nasihah, you must have a lot of patience. What our sabir haq, what our sabir sabr. Yeah, we have to have the patience. Just like us, once upon a time, we are just like everybody. But now Allah opened the heart, we are changing, and some are not changing yet. So we hope that inshallah one day they will change. Give them time. Don't force them. They become our enemy because they do not know what we are talking about. Because they are not exposed to it, we don't blame them 100%. We hope the first group of people that will change is the scholars. We want the scholars to be sincere to themselves, to follow the Quran and Sunnah Sahihah. Then I think it's easy for the mass to follow. The problem today is we have problem among scholars. Yeah, so we hope that Allah will help us to overcome this problem among the scholars. Yeah? Have patience and keep on sharing the truth to them. Inshallah. Next, please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa My name is Kamal Adil Osman from CIS Department. Alhamdulillah. CIS Department in PLD. Allahu uh, My question is about uh, following Imam. And uh, I just want to do two things. One, the hadith that said, um, and secondly, the other part is for citing Fatiha, uh, many hadith uh, concerning citing Fatiha during Imam. Then my question is, how can we follow Imam? For example, you see many people when Imam finish reciting Fatiha, when they uh, bend down for who or for and uh, yeah for who or who yeah then they follow us some they keep on standing 
Oh, so which one is the best? Am I to keep on waiting till I finish my Fatiha? Or am I to follow the Imam yeah. immediately he finished this? Alhamdulillah. Thank you, brother. Maybe the brother is asking us, the hadith the Prophet said, Inna majwilla imam li yurtama bihi fa iza qabbara fa qabbira wa la tuqabbir hata yuqabbir iza raqa farqa wa la tarqa wa hata yarqa ila akhir hadith It's a very authentic hadith you can get in Sahih Muslim and you know, Sahih Bukhari too. Now, what the Prophet is telling us, Imam is made for you to follow. Follow. When Imam takbir, ma'mum takbir. And there's other hadith when the Imam recite, when the Imam recite Fatiha aloud, like Fajr or Maghrib or Isha, when he recite aloud, Fa'an sit. You just listen. Be quiet and listen. Because after the Imam recite Fatiha, he's going to recite other surah. You just have to listen. And when the Imam ruku, farqa'u, you make ruku. We know that some opinion said, there's no prayer without Fatiha. If you read Fatiha, you have no prayer. That hadith is very authentic. No one dispute about the hadith. But the hadith do not apply for prayer when the Imam recite aloud. It only applies to the prayer that the Imam don't recite aloud. Like Zohar and Asa. Like Maghrib, the last record. Isha, the third and the fourth record. But with the Imam reciting aloud, then the Prophet command the Imam to listen, just listen. And then when Imam rukuk, you make rukuk. That is the right manners. I don't blame a lot of people who are confused about these issues because this hadith is very, very clear. But there are many, many hadiths about recitation of Fatiha where majority of people don't really understand. So, inshallah, the right understanding, when you follow the Imam, the Imam recite aloud, you just have to listen so you don't have problem. You don't have to recite with the Imam. You don't have to compete with the Imam. Zakhalaq. Next, brother. Do we have the last one? Last. This will be the last one, inshallah. Now. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have seen you a lot in the uh, history. Mashallah, you're an excellent speaker. Zakallahu khair. May Allah bless you, brother. Uh, my name is Amir Shafiq bin Zuraden. I'm doing Bachelor of Engineering, first year, second sem. Uh -huh. uh, my question is simple. How does it feel when you first enter Islam? Alhamdulillah. Zakallahu I don't know how to feel. I believe that I want to experience something new. I was a Buddhist. I migrated to Christianity. Then I came to Islam. I want to know more about this religion. So I believe that Islam is something very good because Quran, especially the Quran, have changed Sayyidina Umar. My conversion is through my reading of the life history of Sayyidina Umar, who hate Islam, who want to kill the Prophet one day. And that moment, Allah exposed him to the recitation of Surah Taha from his own sister and brother-in-law. And that opened his heart. And he became a Muslim and he became one of the most important caliph in Islam. Now that gave me the interest, opened my heart. Now, this book must be very powerful, can change Omar the Qatar from the enemy of the Prophet to become the Khalifa. That's how I started to learn about this religion. But in the beginning, of course, I'm very new toward this religion. Very sad to say, I don't have good experience in the beginning of my life as a Muslim. Because the people who, the, who I am exposed to, they don't show good example. There are people who humiliate me. There are people who I live in the mosque, they chase me out of the mosque. I don't have good experience in the beginning. But later on, Alhamdulillah, Allah give me guidance, save me from this environment. And Allah opened the door of Medina and Munawwara for me to further my Islamic study in Saudi Arabia. That changed my whole lifestyle. But before, I feel sad, sometimes I was thinking, am I making the wrong choice becoming a Muslim? Why the Muslims are not kind to me? Why the Muslims don't love me? They treat me like an alien. But today, the Muslims are better. That was 40 over years ago. 
you know, today they are not a good Muslim organization helping rivers, so they are taken care uh, more than the time I became a Muslim. See. But I believe that whatever happened, Allah has His own plan. Maybe Allah want to make me stronger that I have go, I have to go through all this bad experience to understand the real, the reality of life. So I believe that what Allah said, in the man usri yusra, it start with difficulty and ease will follow later on. So that is what I can share with you, brother. It's a long story. If Allah will, one day you meet me, we discuss further, inshallah. Yeah. Last week, sister, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. to the sister. Firstly, I want to remind all the good brothers and sisters of knowledge. When you offer salam to anybody, give them time to respond. Okay? Because they have to respond. So in your salam, just hold on and let the people respond to your salam. Secondly, if you want to give any salam in the future, please don't plus he ta'ala. It's not from the sunnah of the Prophet. The Prophet never taught any of the companion to recite Salam by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Just wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Or Assalamu alaikum The word ta'ala is not from the sunnah of the Prophet It has become common by a lot of people Because a lot of people doing good intention Doing things but they don't follow the sunnah We would want to love to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Alhamdulillah Secondly uh, you are questioning about, if I'm not wrong, about Muslim and not yet Muslim. We have Muslim who also have problem and we have not yet Muslim with us. Who come first? Islamically, everybody who approach you, whoever respond to you, he or she come first. You don't have to wait. You have, don't have to wait that I got to correct the Muslim first. Yeah, the Muslim also must be reminded that war is not for Muslim. If I say da'wah, I'm referring to not yet Muslim. Among Muslims, you don't call da'wah. We are very confused today. We thought like, now I'm talking to you, I'm doing da'wah, I'm not doing da'wah. I'm just here to remind each other, wa zakir fa inna zikra tan fa'al mu'minin. Allah said, keep reminder. Reminding each other always bring benefit. Among Muslims, you don't say you are da'wah. Allah said, inna mal mu'minuna ikhwah fa aslihu bayna akhwaikum. All believers are like brothers, so it's your duty to reconcile. Islah, islahiyah, not da'wah. And the Prophet said, Adinu nasiha, religion is good advice. So, when you talk among Muslims, it's called nasiha, islah, and also zikr, reminder. When you talk to not yet Muslim, that is called da'wah. You understand that, sister? Now? Important to know the difference because this term create a lot of confusion. When the Muslim is active giving lecture among Muslims, oh, they are doing da'wah, they don't do da'wah. That's why da'wah is dead. The real da'wah, you talk to the not yet Muslim. Among Muslims is islahiyah, nasiha, and zikr. So what, whoever comes first, if the not yet Muslim come to you first, talk to them. Among Muslim, you also have to do the same thing, but you don't do da'wah to them because they are Muslim. Ummatun, ummatun da'wah is the not yet Muslim. They are ummatul ijabah. They have accepted Islam. So we give reminder, nasihat. 
You understand that says? Insha'Allah. So be ready for everything. It's like me. If I, my sister, my brother are not yet Muslim, they are not yet Muslim. Can I go out and call other people? Yes. If I see them, I will talk to them. I see among Muslim, I remind fellow Muslim. That's how we have to work today. Both ways. And may Allah bless us, may Allah guide us, brother and sister. Time is out now. I'm sorry. I think that I should have more time with all of you because I came all the way. Yeah? And you all are from here, alhamdulillah. But please, you have beautiful brothers and sisters. You have local, you have foreigner. Please show the Islamic brotherhood to everybody and show the beauty of Islam to your friends who are not yet Muslim. Anybody who have the interest to know about Islam, you can contact them with us. Good. You can bring them to see us. Alhamdulillah. And please visit our center when you come to Kuala Lumpur. Contact us. We have our Raya card and Ramadan card two in one. You can purchase the three and get our contact number, address, all is there. So that you know how to communicate with us in the future. And may Allah guide us. May Allah strengthen our Iman and forgive all our sins and the mistakes that we have done. And may Allah open our heart to always have good thoughts with Allah and host Nizan among ourselves. Because the bad feeling that we have amongst us cause a lot of unrest and disunity among us. May Allah unite the heart of all the Muslims, especially the student of knowledge, in Petronas. Petro untuk semua orang. Yeah? Petro that serve all people. May Allah bless you. May Allah guide us. May Allah forgive us. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa al-aqri da'wana. And alhamdulillahi wa alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. لا ضرر ولا درا لا ضرر ولا درا لا ضرر ولا درا الحمد لله next time i see you i'll ask you this again insha'Allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh